Hello and welcome in the next video. Today I will make some comparisons and calculations between different multimaterial systems to estimate which one is the best. There obviously won't be a clear winner, but different systems will be the best in different situations, so I will try to position them and help you making a decision which one will be best for you. I will compare three approaches and three printers as an example. BambuLab P1S as the representative of standard one extruder printer with AMS as the filament changer, BambuLab H2D as representative of printers with two nozzles, and Prusa XL as a representative of printers with tool changer and multiple extruders. I was thinking if to add some dual extruder IDEX printer here as well, but BambuLab H2D will be good enough to cover this group, as the speed at which it's changing this nozzle is basically same as for printers with two separated extruders. So I will look at several scenarios, printing very simple two-color model, printing slightly more demanding two-color model in two variants, printing a bit more complicated two-color model, and printing complicated four-color model. Let's start with printers and some price comparison. BambuLab P1S combo with AMS system costs currently 650 euro, but right now there is an anniversary promotion and since it's supposed to be evergreen video, let's count 700 euro. At the end it won't matter very much, as you will see. BambuLab H2D costs currently 1900 euro, and 2200 euro with AMS, so let's count 2200 euro. Prusa XL with 5 tool heads costs currently 4300 euro assembled or 3700 euro semi assembled, so let's take an average here and count 4000 euro. Now let's pick some representative models which will be used for calculations. First one will be a simple two color wall decor which I made because I have a bunny at home. It's two color print, but color shifts are specific layer, so it's nothing complicated. Next print will be a stand for Game Boy. Here the two color is a bit more complicated, but still it's just few layers that needs a color shift. For comparison, I will use two versions of it. Both colors used at one print, or letters printed separately. Next model will be coin stand, but printed on the bottom edge. It's very pointless, but it's just to show the differences when there is a lot of color shifts on many layers. In normal conditions you would of course print it laying flat and have just one color shift, but I didn't have anything better to show right now, so let's pretend it makes sense. Last project we are going to use will be Link figurine from Legend of Zelda. Here there is a lot of color shifts and those continue on almost all the layers. Last thing to set up. I'm going to block all the printer's volumetric flow at 8 mm per second, just to even out the printing time on all three machines and focus only on the differences created by color changing. Those three printers are used just as an example, so this will make the comparison more fair. Starting with the first wall decor print. For P1S it would take 12 grams of filament, including 1 gram in waste, and 35 minutes to print. For 4 elements on the plate it's increasing to 45 grams in total, including 1 gram in waste, and 1 hour 48 minutes time. For H2D it's 11 grams in total, including half gram for waste, and 60 36 minutes to print. For 4 elements on the plate, it's 43 grams, half gram for a waste, and 1 hour 50 minutes print time. For Prusa XL, it's 11.5 gram and 27 minutes. So, as you can see, for easy prints with color change just in the mid print, more expensive solutions don't offer anything more than the standard AMS. It's generating barely any filament waste and time delay. So if that's your main prints, there is no need for two nozzle systems. Let's pick up the next model, Game Boy Color Stand. For P1S, the model itself is 18 grams plus 12 grams for filament waste. That's pretty much. 
sprint takes 1 hour 51 minutes. If we fill the bed with 6 of them, total filament usage is 120 gram and filament waste is still 12 grams. That's very acceptable. Print time in this case is 5 hours 15 minutes. For comparison, let's take also version of the model where you print separately the stand and the letters. In this case, print weight is 18 grams and 1 hour 8 minutes, including the letters. So time almost doubled and we are not losing any filament for waste. For 6 models on the print bed, filament usage is 106 grams and 4 hours 30 minutes of print time, including the letters. Here the difference between printing all at once or separating the letters is decreasing drastically and used filament is also very similar. Ok, let's look at H2D. For one stand, used filament is 21 grams, including 3 grams as waste. Print time is 1 hour 19 minutes. For six stands, it's 111 grams in total and still 3 grams of waste. Print time is 4 hours 51 minutes in this case. We can see the improvement here versus using AMS, but it's visible mostly for printing just one stand. For six stands printed at once, the difference again starts disappearing. Let's also look at Prusa XL. Here used filament is 20 grams and 1 hour 10 minutes of print time. For six stands at once, it's 113 grams of filament and 5 hours 6 minutes of print time. So very comparable numbers to H2D. Let's step up this model a bit. Since it's for Game Boy Color, let's use four colors. One for stand and three different for the logo. It's small model, but more filament changes, so how will the numbers look? For P1S we are up to 52 grams of filament used, including 34 grams in filament waste and 3 hours 23 minutes of print time. For 6 models we are getting 142 grams, including 34 grams of waste and 6 hours 44 minutes of print time. For Bambulab H2D we are getting 43 grams of used filament, including 25 grams of waste, and 2 hours 39 minutes of print time. For 6 pieces we are getting 133 grams of filament, used including 25 grams of waste, and 6 hours 7 minutes of print time. We can see the difference for one model, but for 6 pieces the differences are again not as big. Now let's check Prusa XL. For one model we have 22 grams of filament and 1 hour 18 minutes of print time. For 6 models we got 114 grams of filament and 5 hours 14 minutes of print time. So 4 print heads does its job here and cut the filament and printing time a lot. But again the difference becomes smaller when we print more at once. Next model is the display stand for silver coins. Here we will have much more filament changes as it's being printed vertically for scientific purposes. For this model, P1S with AMS will need 293 grams of filament, where 148 grams is just the waste, and print time is 16 hours 44 minutes. For 6 pieces on the belt plate, number go up to 911 grams in total, including 168 grams of wasted filament, and 1 day and 20 hours of print time. For H2D numbers are more optimistic. 185 grams in total, including 60 grams of filament waste, and 9 hours 7 minutes of print time. Big difference. For 6 pieces on the belt plate, numbers goes up to 803 grams in total, including 60 grams of filament waste, and 1 day 13 hours of print time. Still a difference, but smaller. For Prusa XL used filament is 176 grams and print time of 9 hours 5 minutes, again very close to Bamboo H2D. For 6 elements on the belt plate numbers are 815 grams of filament and 1 day 18 hours of print time. With this type of prints we can start seeing the difference between having two nozzles and changing filament in one nozzle. 
Going to the last model, the most complicated one. Four color link figurine from The Legend of Zelda. Starting with P1S. For reference, this model in one color takes 27 grams of filament and 1 hour 41 minutes to print. Using all four colors in AMS, we are getting 244 grams of filament and 17 hours of print time. Huge difference. For 12 figurines, numbers goes up to 511 grams and 1 day 9 hours print time, what makes for 43 grams and below 3 hours per piece. For H2D, the two nozzles are helping a little bit. For one model, we are getting 110 grams of filament and 7 hours 10 minutes of print time, what's much less than on P1S. For 12 pieces, we are getting 415 grams and 25 hours print time, what makes for 35 grams and around 2 hours per piece. Still a lot more than for single color model, but big improvement over the P1S with AMS. Now let's check Prusa XL. 56 grams of filament and 3 hours 32 minutes print time for single model. Half of what H2D needs. For 12 figurines, we are getting 319 grams of filament and 21 hours 36 minutes print time. What makes for 27 grams and below 2 hours of print time per piece. Here the difference between Prusa XL and Bamboo H2D starts fading out a bit. Alright, that was a lot of numbers. Let's step back and make sense of it all. When does it make sense to go for more expensive multi-material printer? And when is a basic AMS setup enough? I will also use average filament price of 15 euro per kilogram for the calculations. Let's break it down into two main factors time savings and material costs, and then compare them to the price of the printers. So from time perspective, across all tests we saw that for very simple models like the Bunny Wall Decor or basic Game Boy stands, AMS systems perform nearly identically to dual nozzle or tool changer systems. No major time savings from more expensive printers here. As the models get more complex, especially with frequent color changes like the vertical coin stand or Zelda figurine, AMS starts falling behind significantly. The time loss from repeated unloading and loading and purging builds up fast. The Bamboo H2D consistently shaves off hours for complex or multi-model prints. For example, the Link figurine took 17 hours on the P1S versus 7 hours on the H2D. The Prusa XL performs best for heavy-duty multi-material prints, especially when printing multiple items at once. But the advantage of having 4 or 5 tool heads becomes smaller when you batch items and the swap penalties get amortized across the job. So when is the upgrade worth it? If you print simple dual color items occasionally, like signs, logos or stands, the Bambula P1S with AMS is more than enough. You won't benefit from a more expensive machine. If you frequently do dual material, flexible plus rigid combos or print medium complexity items often, the H2D might make sense. From time perspective at least. H2D swaps colors quicker thanks to two nozzles, so if printing quickly is the priority for you, that's a rational choice. If you are looking from price perspective, things complicate a bit. If we are looking at the wasted filament differences between P1S and H2D, for the most complicated Zelda print we have done, the difference was around 120 grams per 12 figurines. That's 1.8 euro. Price difference between P1S and H2D is around 1,500 euro. That means that the price will even out after 100 kilograms of the difference in wasted material. That's around 10,000 of printed Zelda figurines in batches of 12 figurines per print bed. If you are printing such amounts, sure. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense price-wise. Prusa XL is double the price of H2D 
and half of the filament waste, so the number is the same. And that's calculation made on the most extreme Zelda model. For easier models, the amount of prints needed to catch up with the price difference is even bigger. If you run a print farm, two high complexity prints need 4 plus colors frequently and print in large patches, then the Prusa XL starts to make sense. It's expensive upfront, but per part cost and time drop significantly. In conclusion, for big majority of 3D printer users, the P1S combo makes the most of sense. The price difference between P1S and H2D or Prusa XL is so big that the wasted material won't justify it financially. If you are printing a lot of different multicolor prints and printing just one or two models at once, the H2D might start making sense from time perspective if you can't wait for the print too long and have a long queue of prints waiting in line. Prusa XL is again a different category and meant for advanced print farms, not for hobbies. In conclusion, if you are a situation when you need H2D or Prusa XL, you will know it. If you are asking the question if it's worth it, then no, then AMS on P1S is good enough for you. I run a small print farm myself where around 50% of my projects are in multicolor, but I still wouldn't benefit from H2D when it comes to price. Majority of my prints I designed in a way to print the colors separately and then assemble it. Doesn't take much time, but saves a lot in filament. There are a lot of creative ways to cut down the filament waste. Printing parts in pieces, as the Game Boy stands, experimenting with flashing volumes, changing print orientation, as with the silver coin stand, so it's rare for H2D to make sense just from price perspective. Time savings is a different topic, and here I would see more potential for it. At the end, after all the calculations and estimations you have seen in this video, I think you will be able to make the decision what's best for you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.